New this morning, at least six people were killed and more than a dozen injured as severe storms ripped through southern Oklahoma, Texas, and Louisiana. This is a live look right now at some of the damage in Texas. According to the National Weather Service, the storms will continue in the southeast today. They're expected to fire up across Alabama, eastern Tennessee, northern Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. We're also going to take a live look at Capitol Hill this morning where it's a big day. The House of Representatives expects to pass a nearly $500 billion coronavirus relief bill today. The interim proposal includes more than $320 billion for the Paycheck Protection Program, as well as $75 billion for hospitals and $25 billion for coronavirus testing. The bill was passed by the Senate on Tuesday, and the Republican-controlled Senate approved the aid on a voice vote the same day, but with some opposition expected in the House. Leaders decided to bring members back for a roll call vote. The president says he will sign it as soon as it lands on his desk. Another 4.3 million workers are expected to have filed state unemployment claims, bringing the total number now to people seeking benefits to over 26 million. The number of jobs lost rose to 22.2 million over the last four weeks, erasing the millions of jobs recovered since the Great Recession. Economists say the government's Paycheck Protection Program for small businesses could encourage hiring as companies begin to get funds, and rehiring could pick up in the next couple of weeks. Moorhead police are still investigating a possible shooting that happened yesterday. It was along the 1300 block of 19 and a half Street South. Witnesses say they saw two men arguing in an apartment building's parking lot. They say the words escalated to fist fighting, and then both men allegedly pulled out their guns and fired at each other at close range. Police say the suspects left the area before they arrived. Anyone with information on this incident is urged to call police. Law enforcement officers investigating the killing and dismemberment of a 19-year-old woman say they have discovered remains in a landfill believed to be those of the victim. 27-year-old Ethan Broad was charged this week in Clay County with second-degree murder without intent while committing a felony in the death of Destiny Avery. 26-year-old Andrea Payne and 22-year-old David Erno were also arrested yesterday and are in the Clay County Jail on accessory to murder charges. They have yet to be formally charged. Officers had been searching the landfill but gave no further details on what they found. The criminal complaint says Broad confessed, however, to killing and dismembering Avery but he says it was in an act of self-defense. Destiny's mom has told Valley News Live that she's glad there is finally some good news in this tragic case and that she's happy that her daughter will be laid to rest soon. Let's get a check now of our first alert storm team forecast. Eight minutes before seven and uh, we're starting off our day kind of under the clouds. Under the clouds, in the rain in some places, and continuing to uh, see those milder temperatures at least sticking around. So we want to take a look on our newest uh, first alert sky cam in our sky cam network. This is the home of economy sky cam in Grand Forks. And uh, you can see on our sky cam, we've got the clouds overhead over to the left side of your screen, a little rain shower coming down, some breaks in the clouds too. And in the parking lot and on the road there, you can see that the road surface is wet. There's some puddles there. Uh, so you're going to want to watch out for road spray uh, while you're driving today or any slick spots. One other thing I want to point out as we look at the radar here, Grand Forks, of course, seeing some showers in town. But notice what's going on south of Crookston along Highway 9 there, a lightning bolt. Uh, we have one little thunderstorm happening right now south of Crookston in western parts of Polk County and back over to Red Lake Falls. And we may see more of that this afternoon. Other places seeing some rain down along the South Dakota border and over to the east. And some of that rain may be causing some slick spots in the east thanks to temperatures there being into the uh, freezing range. Here's a wider view. You can see those showers rolling eastward. We get a break and then there's more where that came from for later on this afternoon and tonight. It's 44 degrees in Fargo, 40 in Grand Forks. So a nice mild start to the day. Again, in most areas, there are some spots at the freezing mark or below. And as we advance through the morning hours, expect this round to advance eastward. And then most of us get that day, that break in the midday time. But then we see chances for rain and thunder pop up yet again as we head into the afternoon. This is five o'clock. You can see some pink on the map here indicating a couple of heavier downpours with some 
thunder showers moving through in eastern North Dakota. There's going to be some breaks in the clouds. We'll get some sunshine that will cause that heating and enough instability around to trigger some of these showers. And again, thunder showers. Temperatures will be in those 50s to some low 60s in the south. And we keep the milder weather around this week, but we also keep around that uh, chance for some rain and some thunder into Saturday. Looks pretty nice. Thank you, Lisa. It's orange cone season, and if you're planning on driving, MnDOT is asking you to be careful, slow down, maybe drive like your loved ones are the ones out working on the road. More than 200 active work zones are scheduled throughout the state this construction season. Officials say in the last five years, 46 people have died, and more than 4,200 people were hurt in work zone traffic crashes. Minnesota's summer resorts have been approved by Governor Tim Walz to reopen this season. Communal amenities are not allowed to be used except retail food stores, laundry facilities and fish cleaning stations and docks as long as they operate with sanitary and social distancing practices in place. Hospitality Minnesota says most resorts were waiting on this recommendation from the governor to decide whether or not to open this summer. The stay at home order is still in place and if it continues into the summer months, the order would of course discourage unnecessary travel and ask people to remain close to their homes. The governor says resorts that do not want to open because they feel like they're not comfortable with it don't have to. Meanwhile, a total of 2,721 people have tested positive for COVID-19 in Minnesota. So far, 176 people have died from the virus and more than 1,300 people have recovered. In North Dakota, one more person has died from the virus, bringing the death toll now to 14. 679 people have tested positive. Cass County still leads the state in total positive cases. The city of Grand Forks and the North Dakota Department of Health are holding a mass coronavirus testing at the Alara Center today. The testing is for JR Simplot employees, as well as anyone who has had close contact with people who have tested positive for COVID from LM Wind Power. The drive through testing event will take place from noon to 5. Those needing to be tested today have already been contacted by health officials. Moorhead firefighters are collecting homemade face mask donations this weekend for people in living facilities. You can help by dropping off those homemade masks Saturday from 10 to 2 at either Moorhead Fire Station. There's one on 12th Street North and one on 20th Street South. All 775 fire departments across the state of Minnesota are taking part in this homemade mask drive. If you want more information, you can find it on our VNL News app. With social distancing, many of us are trying to limit the trips to the grocery store. But when it comes to making meals, it can be hard to follow the recipe if you don't have a specific item in your home. But that's why we're learning about off the hip cooking this morning. We check in with the Valley Today's Abby Furchner. Good morning, Abby. Good morning, Lisa. I don't know if it's just me, but I'll buy certain groceries for a recipe and I'll only use a part of them. And then I'll leave that leftover tomato just sitting there until it goes bad because I'm running out of ideas on how to use it. But that's why I'm here with co-founder of Food of the North, Megan Myrtle. Megan, you have three easy recipes that we can use over some of that, those leftover items. Or if we're looking at our pantry, we have that can of beans that has just been sitting there for a long time. You have some recipes that we can definitely use those with. And I first want to start with that pizza that you made. I absolutely love this idea. How did you make that barbecue, uh, barbecue chicken pizza? Yeah, so um, just quickly, off the hip cooking is a concept where you, you don't follow a recipe specifically. You come up with a recipe idea based on the ingredients you have. So a pizza, a hot dish, a stir fry, a soup, look and see what you have in the kitchen. How can those come together? So the first dish we made today was a pizza and it's a barbecue chicken pizza. Um, the sauce for this was a mixture of barbecue and ranch sauce because I didn't have enough barbecue sauce, so I needed to get a little bit more. We did some rotisserie chicken on the top. I didn't have fresh tomatoes on hand, so I used diced tomatoes and just drained off the extra liquid. Um, put a little onion on there. I would have loved to have done bell pepper on this too, but I didn't have any, and that's part of off the hip cooking. You adapt and adjust. Um, a mix of cheddar and mozzarella cheese, a little red pepper flake on the top, and then bake that in the oven. Oh, I love that. And then you also made a hot dish and this is kind of a Mexican style one. And I think this is so great because a lot of us have that rice and those beans that we might have bought and we just don't know how to use them. And we're kind of running out of ideas. And so you threw that all in there and we'll have all these recipes up on ballynewslive.com, of course. But if, like I said, you're running out of meal ideas, these are super easy, super sim simple and gives you a chance to kind of get creative in the kitchen too. 
I love that. Get creative. Get the kids involved, too, and just kind of search out what you have in the uh, cabinets and uh, throw it all together. Of course, Megan is an expert. Everything is delicious that she makes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some great ideas from her. Abby, thank you so much. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Here's today's question. Americans use more of this than any other country. What is it? Oh, this shouldn't surprise you. What was sold out for weeks and weeks? Toilet paper. And I believe the survey was done before the uh, pandemic that we're in right now. Remember, you can play along every weekday morning by heading to our Valley News Live Facebook page. That's where we post the question of the morning. Here on the Valley today, we want to thank you for tuning in to watch our coverage. And we want to reassure you that we're working hard to make sure that you're staying informed during this COVID-19 pandemic. Of course, you can join us every morning here on the Valley today. Check out our valleynewslive.com website and use our VNL News app. The Today Show and CBS This Morning are just about to start, but the Valley Today rolls on. Join us right now for more live up-to-the-minute news and weather on the Fargo CW.